Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefine Horizons, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to put together a list or table of record references for a boundary survey. Uh, so this is something that you might do uh, on a subdivision map, land subdivision map, or on what we what we call here in California record or survey map. That could also be for a, a existing conditions exhibit or a boundary survey exhibit for a client. <clears throat> And so what, are, what is a record references table? Uh, so that, that's a table that lists the uh, deeds and um, other uh, survey maps that the boundary surveyor use to uh, retrace or resolve uh, uh, typically parcel boundaries. It could be easement boundaries or lease boundaries. but So it's a, it's a list of that information and it's it's useful for a couple reasons. One is uh, it allows a, a, another surveyor to obtain and review those same uh, historical land records, right? You want you want everybody to be working from the same same set of historical land records as a general rule. Um, and then the other reason uh, it's important is because when you look at distances on a on a boundary survey, they will typically um, if if the surveyor has done a good job, uh, she will let you know how those uh, distances uh, that they've measured uh, fit with the measurements in the in the historical land records uh, or they might show you how the the historical measurements and historical land records fit with each other depending on the on the context and the purpose of the survey so and that, that's really important so I think I have um, one or two other videos that talk about the different types of distances uh, that you measure in a boundary survey, you know, record, measured, calculated, calculated from record. So I'll try and remember to link to those or have, have Lori, our marketing person, link to those in the description for the video here on YouTube. Um, and then I'm going to do a follow-on video to this one that shows you how you use the list of record references uh, when you're doing what we call a boundary annotation drawing or a boundary annual drawing here at Redefine Horizons. So but we're not going to do that in this video. In this video, I'm just going to show you how do you put together the table of references. So I'm going to just pull up a text editor here, and uh, we're going to go ahead and start this process. So there's different ways to do the references. So some companies will do A, B, C, um, but at, at my company, the way we do it is we do R1 for reference 1, and they're just numbered sequentially, R2. Okay. It's just, it's just that's an abbreviation for the reference because when you when you go in and you do your anno boundary annotation drawing, you don't have to type out the full document name. Sometimes the document names can get long. Okay, so this is just it, there's no rule here. This is just the convention. This is the, the the style that I grew up with, and so it's the style I use now at my own company. Um, and so at, at my company, what we always do R1 at my company again. This there's no rule or legal requirement here. This is just a, an organizing principle that we use. So my company, we almost always put R1 as the vesting deed. Okay, so that's the deed that the last deed that conveyed title to the current owner, fee title. Okay, so if you go into one of our jobs, you go into the boundary research folder, deeds, we always have that under the subject parcels. So here's my vesting deed. Okay, it's a document number from 2022. Okay, and so we're gonna go ahead and add that as R1. So we're gonna say DN. 2022-1107-1109. Now, every county in the United States will have it's it county different counties in different states have different ways of identifying their recorded documents. So, it's this that's going to change depending on the county you're in. Most counties now in California, if you have a newer deed, it's going to be DN for document number. And just to show you, if you open that deed, um, that that's usually shown somewhere on the on newer deeds, it's usually on the cover first page um, in some of the older docs it'll actually be verbally not verbally but it'll be written out it'll be a book page it'll be written out at, at the at the bottom end of the deed but newer deeds will have it right here okay and uh, you notice there's no dash here but for the sake of readability um, I like to put the dash in after the year okay now one other important thing that you need to accompany your list of record references isn't isn't usually is an abbreviations table so I'm going to do that here. So we need to let people know what DN is. DN is document number. Okay. OK, 
because uh, they they name different type maps, different types of maps, and uh, deeds are named different things, and so you you'll you'll need to explain that in, in your uh, abbreviations table, and you'll you'll see some other examples of that. Okay, so my shop R1 is almost always the vesting deed. R2 is typically the what I call the controlling survey if there is one. So if if the parcel is was created on a a, subdiv a land subdivision map, which in California is either a subdivision map, five lots or more, or parcel map, five maps or fewer. If it's a, one of those parcels on, on a subdivision map or it's a part of a parcel on the subdivision map, that's what we call, at my shop, we call that a controlling survey. That almost always gets R2 reference. Now, in this case, I'm dealing with a parcel that has never been surveyed. So I don't have a controlling survey that's never been surveyed. Um, so it, it's I, I'm I don't have to put that for R2. I've got some flexibility. So normally, if there isn't a controlling survey, the what I would put in the R2 slot is the latest retracing survey. Um, again, don't have that here um, because uh, this the parcel has never been surveyed. Okay. Um, now, if I had a controlling survey, that would go in R2, and R3 would be the latest retracing survey if there was one. Okay. So just to give you an example, let's say that this was created on uh, parcel map uh, 3852, and it was then later retraced on record of survey uh, 3588, or 2588, uh, 25 is too old, 3588. Okay, so then R2, that's the controlling subdivision map that created the parcel. This is a later retracement survey that would go in the R3 slot. If there was no controlling survey, the retracing latest retracing survey would 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 slide up to the R2 spot. Okay, but in this case, because I have a parcel that's never been surveyed, I don't have a controlling survey, a subdivision map, or a retracement survey. So I've got a little more flexibility. So the next thing I usually start with is the retracement surveys for the parcels around the subject parcel. Um, and I usually try and do those in the order of importance. So uh, in this particular example, we really only have uh, three. We've got the survey here at the intersection. Uh, we've got this, uh, I believe it was a parcel map here to the south of us. And then there's a subdivision map here. So we, we really only have three of those. Okay, and uh, if I had done my job right, they would be on the right layer. They're not. Uh, this is this topo storm drain layer, which is totally not the right layer. <laughs> so... <laughs> So, the, so I didn't do my job right. So if Elena watches this video, she's going to fire me. That's my, my lead CAD, CAD tech uh, junior mapper, and I, I didn't do my job right. Okay, so uh, we're going to go back into the boundary folder, and we're going to go into research file survey maps, and uh, we're going to go find our maps. Okay, so, and I, I'm the one that put this boundary together, so I have a rough recollection um, of which ones are which. So I think this is my survey at the intersection. Uh, nope, that's the wrong intersection. So it might be this one. Okay, nope, that's a survey to the north. And I ended up not I didn't ended up not using this survey. Um, so let's see here. I know it's a record of survey. Must be 8604. Okay, so this is it. This is my subject parcel. This is the record survey, the intersection they came in here and put in a giant roundabout. Okay, so this is uh, probably the most important survey or the second most important retracing survey. So I'm going to go ahead and put it here in the R2 spot. So this was record survey 84, sorry, 86. Dash zero zero four. Okay, and then we want to make sure that we add RS to our abbreviation table. And I generally put the abbreviation table in order. Okay. All right. So then the next most important map was uh, that parcel map. Okay, and we actually have all the maps here together. So let me just open that. So the next most important map is this parcel map here. So let's go find that.
Okay, so let's see, is this it? Nope, this isn't it. Okay, we're gonna come back to this one because that's that's an important map. That's the original sub map. Alright, so I don't have it up. I don't have it in all the maps. So it's one of these parcel maps here. I think it's one of these older ones. Let's try this one. Okay, so this is it. Created these four lots. So it's parcel map 10417. Okay, so that's our next reference. Oop. Okay, so that's the next and most important retracing map. And then I'm going to put a leading zero here just so things line up a little better. Okay, so then the next uh, most important map after that is uh, it's probably this map. Okay, and that is uh, a newer sub. I think it's probably this one. That's why you should have your your layers, um, your layers properly named. Uh, that is not it. Uh, this is a super new map. All right, guys. Sorry about that. So this is that. It's actually a parcel map, not a sub map. So it's two hundred four thirteen. That's this map here. And we want to make sure that we put PM in our record references table. Okay. Now, I actually lied to you because I, I, I had forgotten that this subject parcel is actually part of lot 5 of an old sub of an old sub map. So we do have a controlling survey. And it is uh, this, this old subdivision map here I'll show you. So it's this map here. I think that is it. Is it Woods Colony? No, Weeks Colony. So we're a portion of Lot Five, actually. Okay, and this is. Uh, I believe this is Subdivision Map Fourteen Five. No, nope, maybe it's Eight Thirteen. I might be thinking of a different job. Yeah, okay, so it's subdivision map 813. So what I have to do now is I have to renumber, right? Uh, because I want that controlling map to be in the R2 spot. So I need to, I need to renumber these. Okay, so now we have the maps listed in the order of importance. Right? Uh, we need to add uh, SM here. So SM is subdivision map. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, then what I normally do after I, I list my maps, uh, retracing or controlling survey maps in order of importance, the next thing I do normally is I, I go through my adjoiner deeds. Uh, so in this case, I actually have three adjoiner deeds. I've got one here one here and one here okay um, and I actually think those are shown in our boundary Android anno drawing a little better so let me go uh, let me go open my boundary anno drawing all right so here this this will give me my my joiner deeds okay so um, now I know on this because of the way this boundary laid out, I actually want to add. This is my immediate joiner and my my next to immediate joiner, and I actually want to add both of those. Okay, but I see we we didn't we didn't include the deed references in here. Um, we should have done that. that. That would have been nice. So we'll have to add those. So my boundary anno drawing is not going to help me. 
Um, so this is another really good reason why you should um, layer your stuff properly. But you can see over here in my properties, this this adjoining here I know is document number 2016, 12114. So we're going to put that in as R6. That's our south adjoiner. So DN 2016, 1214. I'm going to double check that because I feel like there should be more, should be more numbers on that. Okay, and then I just think this is helpful. You can just put South Adjoiner in here. I think that's helpful, right? And then you can even put here, you can put Controlling Map. And then right here, you can put uh, Vesting Deed or Subject Parcel. Because I think those are helpful notes. Um, and, you know, the map checker might tell you to take them out, but it's your map. You can tell the map checker to pound sand if you want. I think it's helpful to have them. Okay. All right. So then we've got uh, we've got these two. So this one is um, the east adjoiner. So we'll make that R seven. D in twenty twenty two one one zero seven one one zero eight. So that's our east adjoiner. And then R eight. Um, We'll make, uh, there's actually a deed that went to the city of Elk Grove. Uh, so they took this in fee. That's a fee right away take. So that's DN 2017 122 80890. And so that is uh, right of way take. All right, and then R9, I'm gonna make this last deed over here. I might not have it in. So uh, I'll have to go I'll have to go figure out what that deed is. Okay, I think that's all the record references I need for this, for this particular uh, boundary survey. Uh, so just a couple things, and I know I mentioned this, but um, you know, some, some county surveyors will tell you that you have to, you know, order these alphabetically or by chronologically or I, he doesn't get to, he or she doesn't get to tell you that. Um, I don't think um, there's no rule. Uh, it's not spelled out in the law, and I don't think it should be. Um, so I have a logical way I like to lay these out, and, and I don't think I should have to change that based on the county I'm working in. So as long as you have a logical system, um, I think you should you should stick to it if it makes sense to you. Um, so don't don't let the map checker or the county surveyor tell you that you got to reorder your record reference table to make them happy. Because at least in California, I don't think you have to do that. All right, so just I'm just going to type some notes here, so just so you can remember, R1 for us at RH is uh, vesting deed for the subject parcel. Okay. R2 is controlling survey map, if applicable. Okay, or latest retracing survey. Alright, and then R3 will be latest retracing survey or uh, we'll, we'll just put that and then we'll put uh, R3 plus, so R3 and up is uh, retracing surveys in order of importance. I'm gonna just put uh, I'm, instead of retracing. I'm not gonna put retracing. I'm gonna say surveys of adjoiners, and I'm just gonna put survey maps in order order of importance. Okay, and then uh, we're gonna just put R X and up is uh, adjoiner deeds. Um, now, on, if you're doing an Alta survey or or a parcel map, subdivision map, you might also have easements. So we can say those might be R Y plus. So then you can say uh, easement deeds. Okay, so that's kind of the logic that we use here. Um, and now we have our list of record references and our our uh, abbreviations for our table. Okay, so uh, we're we're going to actually show that on the map. Right, we'll do our record references. Let me see if I can actually just show you guys that.
So let me open up our exhibit here. And we'll just add a record references table. Okay, so what we want to do now, guys, is uh, add, excuse me, add these record references to our to our actual drawing. So we're going to do that at my shop. We're going to do that in the sheet drawing. So we're just going to add it here under this uh, this little header, record references. So I'm just going to uh, copy those right out of my text editor here, and we'll edit this text. Uh, so that was pretty easy and then uh, we want to add our abbreviations as well so I'm gonna just turn on our layout grid here <clears throat> and we'll copy this down let's see is it gonna fit I'm gonna put it down here Okay, so we'll rename this abbreviations, and then we can grab those out of our text editor, so only four of them. Okay, and then we can turn off that layout grid. Okay, so now we've got our record references and our abbreviations listed. Now this is going to be important because we're going to use this in the next step uh, when we go and create our boundary anno drawing. So thanks for watching guys. I know that that was uh, quite a bit longer than my normal video, but hopefully it'll help. And uh, we'll we'll include it in our series of videos that we're that we're doing on this uh, boundary uh, boundary anno drawing that we're doing for uh, this boundary survey up in Elk Grove.